Hey, and welcome back to Game Talk. I'm your host, Amon Mion. Today, I'm joined by Connor. Hey, guys. And Mike. Hello. And this is happening seconds after the PlayStation 5 games reveal. And we all have varying levels of enthusiasm here, but I just wanted to get it out there that I am very impressed with what I saw. Uh, and there's a few first-party games in particular I want to dive into, but I think overall I saw a very nice variety of games that'll cater to all sorts of tastes and preferences. And uh, yeah, I, I feel like it was a very dense hour presentation, but uh, let's yeah. just start with everyone's initial thoughts. Yeah, I'm a difficult guy to impress, really, when it comes to stuff like this, and I, I, I would say that I'm soundly whelmed. I am definitely not overwhelmed, but I, uh, I, I'm not underwhelmed either, and I kind of expected to be. This, uh, you know, it hit the points that I expected it to hit. Uh, you know, my predictions largely came true. I would say. Yeah, you you were touting uh, Spider-Man for a while, and I was just not a believer. I did not think it would come out this year, but lo and behold, you Spider-Man were right. is going to sell consoles, and Sony is going to milk that property as much as they can. And I don't blame them. It was a good game. I do kind of. Spider-Man was the reason I picked up a PS4 largely. Yeah. And uh, it was a great game. Not a system seller for me. Uh, got a lot more fun out of Uncharted and Persona than I did uh, Spider-Man. But I would, I will I would absolutely I would agree with like that. Yeah. if I get a PS5, Spider-Man will be something I buy definitely. Okay, Mike, did you watch the presentation? I watched bits and pieces of it, strictly okay. towards the end. Do you have any uh, first impressions here before we? I uh, thought I saw something about Little Big Planet in that outro. Nope. Uh, no, that was Sackboy's Adventure. Yes, or something? so it's a Little Big Planet. It's like Super Mario World 3D. It is what we planet. in the industry call a soulless cash-in on oh, a property. I, but here's the thing. We don't know planet. that yet. I mean, we can't say that for sure until, like, there's more impressions out. Yes, because everyone wanted a little big planet game without a level editor. We've been demanding it for years. No, well, here's the thing. It's it's a Sackboy game, and Sackboy's kind of like a mascot. Granted, he's nowhere near as popular as, like, Mario, for instance, but he is a mascot. So yeah, I, can, but no, I can see the logic behind the, why this game exists. Yeah, but nobody wanted a little big planet game without a level editor. Like that's the I mean, whole I, point. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I certainly Little don't. Big Planet was never a good platformer, like, other than how much originality you could squeeze out of it through that editor. I mean the, the physics were always wonky and stuff, like but I, and don't I, get me wrong, I, I imagine this has planet. like a different, you know, engine uh like level level engine rather than uh, the little big planet like handmade levels right like this seems like it's its own sort of thing but yeah, with you know they're, Sackboy they're cashing in on a dead property like Little Big Planet 3 blew nobody's mind I think and Little Big Planet is still very popular with like a younger audience so I, I don't think I don't it's know. us Little Big Planet 3 lost I didn't even buy it I actually found out the history of Little Big Planet 3 recently and it lost a lot of fans largely to um, technical issues on launch yeah, three was never talked about too much, but one and two were the, always the touted ones. I honest, Vita was a big one for yeah, me. Yeah, Vita was a, a lot of one. people don't want to talk about it because it got delayed into obscurity almost, and then it came out on the Vita. But I really like Little Big Planet Vita. Um, but yeah, like why don't we start at the beginning of the show with Spider Man uh, Miles Morales? No, no, no. Morales. If we're starting at the beginning of the show, who's okay, ready let's to start buy with GTA Grand Theft Auto Five. Again? Yes, you're right. So <laughs> wait a second, was that announced? So the very yeah. first thing in the show, so like right after like their hype reel or whatever of previous PlayStation generations, we see GTA Five. Like a, it was like way longer than it needed to be too, in my opinion. But I guess that was that's just the sort of power of Rockstar, right? Like Grand Theft Auto Five being as popular and as financially successful as it, it is. Like, it was honestly one of the longer trailers. I feel like. Yeah, but like. At and it was for a game everyone like, has already played. I know, but it's like Rockstar. I mean, do you doubt that they will sell copies of GTA 5 on PlayStation 5? Like, I'm oh, sure. Oh, I know they will. And I, I would almost guarantee they're gonna that Bethesda is gonna sell copies of Skyrim on the PS5. They'll find a way. Yeah. Oh my God! So what? Wasn't but, there like rumors <clears throat> of GTA 6 and everything? And they see GTA pop up, and it's GTA 5 again. Oh, it was uh, it was very uh, obvious it was going to be GTA 5. Uh, because that's they, so when they were showing the GTA 5 footage, they had like a PS4 logo in the top left corner. So they weren't even showing the PS5 version. They were just showing PS4 footage of Grand Theft Auto. It was like, that's how much power this game has, that they opened their show with that, which is just nuts to me. You know, like they had so many of their stupid. own games to show. Yeah. But, but yeah. 
So, yes, we got a, a glimpse of Grand Theft Auto V on PS4 to start the PS5 event off. What year but, did GTA V come out again? 2011, I believe. That's Does what that, I wanted to say, yeah. Does that sound right? I think it was um, 14. No, 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 no. It was not 2014. It came out uh, during the last gen. Did it come out the same year Skyrim? No, 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 no. Uh, it came out in 2013, I believe. Okay. Because it came out the same year as The Last of Us. The game's been out for near, yes, near a decade. Yes, it's 2013. It's 2013, I just checked. Okay, uh, that makes more sense. But yeah, like, a seven-year-old game, and you're going to launch your revolutionary new system, the first game you're going to show is GTA V. I, I don't think know. that really speaks to me how powerful Rockstar is. I don't care how much money you offered me, I would not have made that Where's play. Red Dead Dude, I'm, dude I would, yeah, that's that's a good point. Where's I'm Red so Dead sure, Pants? we'll get to that in a sec, but I'm so sure that Rockstar paid Sony to put that at the front. Like that I know, and it's, it, it kind of frustrates me, because, like, it's so not on brand. Like, I feel like Sony has more integrity than that, like, or at least cares more, because, like, that, that's, that is a really bad look. Like... Yeah, you know, I, I mean, I don't think it's that big of a deal, honestly. Like, I feel like I forgot about it already. Like, it's it doesn't bother me too much. Yeah, but they could have opened strong, and they got paid not to. Yeah, like, they could have opened with uh, Spider-Man Miles Morales, which was the next thing they showed. Is that and, what it's called? I didn't get to see a ton of it. Yeah, I saw Spider-Man. Which is really surprising, hurt, right? Like, because uh, I feel like they left. So, I guess, light spoilers, or maybe heavy spoilers for the original Spider-Man. But, like... Peter Parker's story went to some unique places in that game, I think. Places that haven't really been explored in Spider-Man lore too much. And I feel like they were setting him up to, you know, continue that story. But it seems like we're taking a break from Parker now and, and jumping well, into Miles' shoes. Do you, was it Spider-Man 2 Miles Morales or was it Spider-Man Miles Morales? It just said Spider-Man Miles Morales. This may not be Spider-Man 2 then. It might be a spinoff. Like... And I'd be fine with that if it's the I same. I mean, I think it's play. really cool that, you know, my, my, it's it's awesome that we're seeing Miles Morales, especially after he was teased at the end of, you know, Spider-Man 1. I assumed in Spider-Man 2 we'd get kind of like a dual protagonist thing with Peter and Miles, but it, it yeah, looks like I Miles is getting his own game, which is really cool. Miles blew up so much after End of the Spider-Verse. How could they not? I mean. Yeah, yeah. And I, I always, like... I'm not a big comics guy, and so my exposure to Miles Morales isn't huge, but I've always been a, like, of the comic characters I know of, he's one of the cooler ones just because of the story of his origin, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I, mean, like, I, I like think that's... his conception, not, like, the character's origin story, but, like, how the character came to, like, it, in reality, the, the story of how they ended up making the character is neat. Yeah, I'm actually not too familiar with Miles Morales' lore. So I'm hoping that game can explore that a little bit. Or, yeah, uh, I kind of... Yeah. I I didn't love the portrayal of Miles Morales. In, uh, I mean, obviously I hated playing as him in the original Spider-Man because he and Mary Jane had those terrible Yeah, levels. so, yeah, spoiler... for Not spoilers, but for people who didn't play Spider-Man 1, he wasn't actually Spider-Man in Spider-Man 1. So you weren't swinging around or anything. He was, nah. You were just like a regular dude walking around. And I also just didn't... He didn't really look like Miles Morales to me. Like, he's kind of bigger, you know? Like, I've always... I guess my biggest exposure to Miles Morales is Into the Spider-Verse. As a kid, yeah. Well, he was supposed to be a kid. He was supposed to be a high schooler in, in Spider-Man 1. And he's, like... I mean, huge, kind of. Like, he's bigger than Peter was. Like... You know, I'm having trouble remembering how Miles looked in Spider-Man 1, but he was I don't know. I thought like guy. like just was, the little snippets ripped. we saw of him in the costume of this game. I thought it looked right in this yeah, game. Yeah, I did too. And so I'm fine with that, you know, if they just And it's not like he looked bad. It just didn't look like Miles Morales to me. And yeah. uh but that's because I was you know, I played Spider-Man right off the back of um into the Spider-Verse. And so like anything that doesn't look like that Miles Morales is going to look a little off to me. Right. Especially since that movie was just so gorgeous. Yeah, I think Sony is really capitalizing on Miles Morales as a character, right? Into the Spider-Verse is considered by many to be the best Spider-Man movie, and now we've got his... Oh, he's, he's getting his own game, you know? So, so. It, It's hard to call... After Spider-Man Far From Home, I'm a big Spidey fan, so... Yeah. I mean, that's that leads into... One, something you said earlier, this game will sell consoles. Like, Spider-Man oh, yeah, is so I, associated yeah. with PlayStation at this point, you know, like... Yeah, even though I wouldn't call... Like, Spider-Man is far from the best game on the PS4. 
I agree. But I agree with that. Yeah. It is a fantastic game, and it will sell consoles because people love Spider Man. I mean, there's a reason there've been a billion Spider Man movies. People people love Spider Man, and it seems like we finally have figured out how to make Spider Man fun again. All the way since like Spider Man Two, right? Like, so okay, many so I'm, games. I'm gonna level with you. I loved Spider Man Web of Shadows. I know that's completely irrelevant, but as a kid, I played okay. a yeah. lot of that game. <laughs> but I think just the being able to capture the feeling of swinging to this city is the most important thing, you know? Like, yeah, I, uh, side note, like, I don't know if you guys saw it, but there was this video on YouTube or something recently of a kid, like, playing Spider-Man for the first time. He was only, like, five or six years old. He was, like, really little. But, like, as soon as he started swinging, like, the dad had the camera on his face, and he was just smiling gleefully. And I just remember, like, that's such an awesome reaction to have to, like, one of your first video games. Because, like, I remember oh, feeling that way when I first played Mario 64. But can you imagine, like, a kid who's who's a fa- fan of Spider-Man playing a game and then swinging around the city like that? That's got to be exhilarating. And it's, I mean, it's rare that I want to fire up an old open world game and just, like, go around the world doing side missions. But, like, I'll absolutely fire up. Like, if I'm just kind of bored, don't have a ton of time, I'll fire up Spider-Man PS4. And just swing around yes. the city and stop I, a I do that crimes. sometimes too. Yeah, I, I, I love. It's such a good. They made it feel so good. It, um, it's typically the disc that's in my PS4. Like, yeah. just in general, it doesn't come out very often. Yeah, but um, Mike, I wanted to get back to you. I'm sorry for cutting you off earlier. You mentioned Red Dead Remastered. Like, where's our po- new generation port of Red Dead Two? Where's Red Dead One? But okay, Rockstar. so those were rumored, right? But like, were honestly, I don't really. I think they were, but I honestly I don't memeing. feel like I care too much. Yeah, <laughs> I think those. No, I, I I swear, like I think Red Dead One Remastered was rumored. Like I'm not even kidding. So I'm, we might I've see that pop up later. Of, never had a ton of interest in Red Dead myself, especially after yeah. like people panned Red Dead Two for being so boring. Like. See, so there there are two very firm camps of, in Red Dead 2. Like, one camp hails it as, like, a masterpiece, and the other one just poops on it because of its gameplay, right? And Pesky it's game- gameplay. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it is, I, I, can, I can see, I mean, I don't want to get into this discussion right now. I mean, I enjoyed it for what it was, but its gameplay does have some serious problems. Because they made it so realistic, it's, like, not fun to control anymore. Um, yeah, that's a mistake. But, I also uh, saw some people panning it, kind of, for like how structured the missions were. Like, you there were uh, like the game felt open and real to the extent that like you could figure out what your mission was gonna be and try to do it before you even got the mission. But then like they would stop you and make you go actually start the mission and then do the exact same thing again. Like I saw some people saying that and stuff. Well, like, the missions were pretty, I, I, I guess linear is a word for it. I mean, the world was very open. The missions themselves were kind of linear. But, like, everything around the world, like, was very dynamic. Like, side things you do that you didn't expect to have any consequence. Like, you'd roll into town later, and, like, some guy you save later is, like, you know, in a tavern or something. And you could talk to him. And, like, it, just little things like that made the world feel alive. Um, but, yeah, I, I feel like this is a little uh, getting off to a tangent here i kind of want to get back to the playstation event yeah um, i agree and i think the the next big thing that was sh- by the way I- i'm sorry i'm so scatterbrained right now did did we see an insomniac logo next to spider-man because i just realized i don't think i we did it it's has to be insomniac. insomniac yeah it has to be i can't Which, tell you whether or not we saw the logo because i didn't get to watch most of the trailer but the next game of note i think is ratchet and clank and uh, honestly, I want to say, like, this this is probably the most impressive game I saw uh, personally for in, in the entire conference. Um, it's called Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. And I think the most impressive thing I saw is the gameplay is very focused on like the like Ratchet has this new weapon that can like open portals to other dimensions. And that's absolutely making use of the SSD. Right. So like several times in the gameplay demo, Ratchet would shoot open a rift and pull himself into another dimension. It was straight up just another world with like enemies running around and collectibles and stuff. And this would happen within the span of like a second. And I think this is specifically that mechanic is showing off, you know, like this is kind of what's possible with the SSD. And I think just the environment and like the particle effects, like this game looks very, very pretty. Um, And like they showed off a bunch of Ratchet's weapons and like uh, 
of course, we have the the signature Insomniac like insane weapon weapons arsenal. Yeah, what um, was the subtitle of this one? Uh, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. Mm, that's pretty good. Yeah. So and and we seem like in one of the dimensions, like Clank fell into, there was like a female Ratchet type character, like she was like <laughs> a white, uh, whatever Ratchet is. Yeah. Rat or whatever. Did it have co-op? Uh, I don't think so. This seems okay. like a... they, they don't do that too often. They did it in um. There was like a spinoff that had co-op that I was a huge fan of as a kid, and I keep wishing they'd bring it back. Yeah, but if you guys haven't seen this gameplay uh, yet, I would encourage you to check it out because I think this was probably the most impressive part of the entire de- entire demo to me. Uh, I'm probably uh, gonna look up most of these trailers and watch them. Uh, yeah, in not horrible quality because the yeah. quality was not great. But um, oh really? Mine was pretty okay. Uh, mine had some artifacts, but maybe your internet's better than mine or something. Yeah, you're stuck in Charleston, so... Yeah. yeah. But, um... Yeah, so... Yeah, the Ratchet and Clank gameplay, I think, was very... Like, the... the showing off the what the SSD can do with the dimensional stuff was very, very cool. Like, it was definitely something we haven't seen before. Because, like... In the... If we, if, if we tried this on a uh, hard disk drive, you know, like... Ratchet opens the dimension, jumps through, it would take, you know, several seconds of loading. But... In this demo, it was it was like boom, he's in another world, and I thought that was so cool. Yeah, that is really cool. That's something mods have been trying to do in Minecraft for so long, like uh, you know, make the Nether portals instantaneous and stuff, and they it works, but not. I mean, obviously that's you know the portal's already there. You know, they know that it's going to be there. If this is something where you can open a portal and jump through it like within the span of a couple of seconds and be in a new place, that's going to be unreal like imagine what that could do for like like i like i think of that level in titanfall 2 with the time travel yeah yeah There's and a lot i mean of cool stuff that like could this is just the the tip of the iceberg this this opens up the possibility for all sorts of cool gameplay mechanics that really haven't been a thing before due to these limitations uh and i'm excited we're already sort of exploring that right off the bat you know like at launch with well that's another thing. I don't think I saw a release date on Ratchet and Clank. Spider-Man did say holiday 2020, but I don't recall seeing one for Ratchet and Clank. So it might not be a launch title. We'll see. If it was a launch title, they'd have told us, I feel like. I mean, they didn't announce any of them as launch titles. They would just say, you know, fall 2020 because, you know, there's no firm launch date for the PS5 yet. It's just nebulously in the fall. Yeah. Um, But I, I would imagine, you know, at least, you know, one either ratchet or spider-man or both could be well i don't think it could be both right like it'd be so weird for insomniac to launch two games at launch you know like that just seems off but maybe they have two healthy teams that can pull it off yeah i mean yeah and i really don't feel like they'd be cannibalizing their own sales or anything like the ratchet and clank audience and the spider-man audience are kind of different yeah, I feel like right, the, the Spider-Man audience is, like, everyone, honestly. I feel like Spider-Man's so ubiquitous, and then Ratchet and Clank is, like, you know, there's there's a subset of, of gamers who enjoy that sort of game. Yeah. Um, they're good yeah, 3D so, platformers. They're just fun. Yeah, they're, they're, I, I, I enjoy them quite a bit. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, yeah, from after Ratchet, we got a bunch of... It, it was a combination of, like third-party AAA and indie games, and some of them really looked neat. Um, I wanted to, to highlight, uh, did you guys see the Square Enix trailer for, like, Project something? Oh, gosh, I wish I had Yeah, I know that. what you're talking about. The one, you, you mentioned that it was rumored to be Final Fantasy 16. Yeah, in the comments, people were being like, this is Final Fantasy 16, because I think Square Enix has done the thing in the past where, like, they announce a game as, like, Project whatever, and then it gets rebranded when it gets closer to launch as, you know, something... Yeah, I mean, Square Enix doesn't do a whole lot of high fantasy games that don't end up being Final Fantasy, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, not, not with that gameplay style. Like, they did... um. Project Athea, that's what it was called. Oh, they've done one in the past, and I ended up picking it up, and it was terrible. But, like, so here's, here's if it's reason. a heavy hitter, they're going to toss the Final Fantasy name on it, because why wouldn't they, you know? It's not like they have a continuous story that it has to fit or anything. But here's the reason I don't think it is. Um, I don't think that it is Final Fantasy 16, because it said at the beginning of the trailer it was designed exclusively for PS5, and there's no way Final Fantasy 16 is exclusive, so... Well, okay, designed exclusively 
Yeah, I guess that does probably mean it's a console exclusive, but that the wording there. Does yeah, not... the wording there is a little weird. You're right. Yeah, it could it could go either way. I think because you know Battlefield games are designed for PC and then ported the console. Like yeah, the wording is a little suspect. Yeah. Um, but then we we also got a Gran Turismo Seven uh trailer. And, you know, like, I don't really care about this at all, but, like, Gran Turismo is a very strong first-party franchise for PlayStation. There are people that are going to enjoy that. Um, I don't think any of us here are big racing sim fans, are we? No. Yeah. So, so I guess, yeah, that was neat. Um, and let's see, what else can we touch on? I don't want to miss anything. That's the main thing. So, uh, there, uh, what I wanted to point out was that I felt like there was a, um, a weirdly large proportion of uh sim uh immersive oh. sims yes thank you immersive yeah. sims there were like yeah, two like, or three of them weren't there and that's like yeah, way so, more than you would expect yeah i was i was actually kind of shocked by that and i think mike you would you would enjoy that quite a bit if you pick through those trailers one of them was ghostwire tokyo which i think connor you mentioned before you've talked about that game before and been like hey that looked really cool i forget where we saw that but i see that's one of those titles that just means nothing to me and i probably did see it and probably did really like it but you call something ghostwire tokyo (laughs) and i'm gonna forget what it is immediately that's a terrible uh, title (laughs) i think this is the first time we saw like gameplay snippets of that game and it looked really really cool like uh it was like a first person immersive sim sim type gameplay um okay i know what you're talking about now because you said that title just now and i i had no idea what you were talking about (laughs) yeah it, it it was a uh, it was like fast paced and it had like a Japanese a- aesthetic and it, I don't know it looked really cool. Um, Something about the name and I, Tokyo being in a title just goes in one ear and out the other. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, but yeah, that was that was one of the immersive sims. And then we got uh, Death Loop by I think uh, it was published by Bethesda, right? But it is uh, who's it by? Shoot. I don't want to get this Was it wrong. Samurai Punk? It's by Arcane, isn't Arcane. it? Arcane, yep. Yes. Yeah, and it looks really good. Dishonored Arcane has a good history and, right? with uh, immersive sims, don't they? It, it, it was Arcane Lion, right? Oh. I think that was the studio. It's Arcane Studios, is what it says on this tweet from Bethesda. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, so they made Dishonored, right, Mike? They made Dishonored and Prey. Oh, wow. Okay, so there's a strong... So that's like an almost guaranteed good immersive sim. It's going to be a good immersive sim. Prey was a masterpiece. I mean, I'm always hesitant when I see Bethesda's name on anything these days, but like that's probably going to be a good game. From from this, you got to separate publisher Bethesda, where they really don't touch the game at all, from Bethesda Game Studios Bethesda. Well, I mean, publisher Bethesda (laughs) is why I think Doom's 2016 didn't get any single-player DLC, you know? Like... They do affect the game, but they usually don't turn a good game into a bad game. They usually just occasionally hold a game back from greatness. Yeah, Arcane Lion is Arcane Studios. There is Arcane Austin, but Arcane Austin is responsible for uh, Wolfenstein Youngblood. Uh, Gotcha. And uh, Fallout 76. Uh, Not a good look. Good thing we got the good Arcane. Yeah, we got the (laughs) Arcane that actually knows what they're doing. Um, yeah. And, um, yeah, so that looked really cool. Um, so two really, really cool looking immersive sims there. Some of the, some of the indie games there looked very interesting to me as well. Um, I'm trying to remember the title of one of them. Let's see here. Um, it was, it, it was like, Ken, yeah, it was Kena Bridge of Spirits, I think. And I must've completely missed this one. Um, this was the one I, I sent you a message in, in the chat that it gave me like an Avatar: The Last Airbender kind of vibe. Oh, and you said that it was did Pikmin. look good. I got yeah. Pikmin vibes from that. Yeah, and yeah, he had like little things following him around, but like I, I don't know, just just the the tone of the trailer and the sort of uh, I guess the 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 vibes the world was giving off really kind of it had like this very spiritual aura to it that I associate with Avatar: The Last Airbender, and that's kind of why it reminded me of that. And uh, yeah, I thought that looked really cool. Yeah. And I think, yeah, so if we, I, I guess we're, we're we're not going in order. We're just jumping around here. Um, yeah, we kind of lost going in order. Yeah. Uh, there was another one, uh, Pragmata. That was uh, that was the one, one of the weird ones with, like, the astronaut, like, floating up in the air with the girl and then, like, landing on the moon. Yeah, and I half that, expected either uh, Toyotaro 
or uh, wait, is Toyotaro uh, is he the guy behind? Or am Toyota, I thinking of Toyotaro is the guy who does the Dragon Ball Super manga? Okay, help me. Who did Nier? Oh, Yokotaro. That's gosh, we're so bad. <laughs> that sounds right. I'm not too sure. Yeah. But uh, actually, the vibe kind of gave me Kojima, or sorry, the trailer kind of gave me Kojima vibes, honestly. I was like, are we yeah, about I, I was Kojima's thinking next project? It was going to be Kojima or Yokotaro, was what I was expecting when I was watching it. And, and yeah. Yokotaro is the uh, Yoko. the guy who was behind Nier. And he, he writes some weird stuff like that. I, I have expected it to be a Nier game, like with the ghosts and the, the technology yeah, and everything. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like that. That seemed intriguing to me, and the um, I, I obviously we saw no gameplay or any sort of indications as to what sort of game it was, but just the the, the tone of the trailer intrigued me. Um, yeah. I wanted to bring up so Resident Evil Eight got revealed, and I think uh. that's pretty huge. Uh, and I love 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 what they did with the reveal trailer because like if you guys remember the reveal for resident evil 7 uh it was it was very similarly structured to this reveal right so like it showed like uh like it showed the trailer for the game it showed like horror it was uh timed with music and everything and then like at the end it um the the word like biohazard flashed up on the screen right and then from the words biohazard they like highlighted Five Gosh. one one. Yeah, five one one. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so, so for <laughs> somebody we... who's behind, like, I'm into Resident Evil. I think it's really cool. But like, is it still Umbrella Corporation? Like, is that even still relevant? Is that the same story still? Uh, I think. Because like, I don't Resident really... Evil Seven gave me very disconnected vibes. Like, I didn't see any stars. Like, I, the only story I really know is one, two, and three. Oh. It's because Resident Evil 7 is a continuation of the Resident Evil series. I think Umbrella died with Wesker, and now it's just, like, Chris Redfield running around cleaning up messes that are caused by other corporations. Okay, so the original virus isn't still out and everything. It's yeah, no, the original out. virus died in, like, the first two games. Remind me if I polish up my Resident Evil lore. No, I mean, the virus was at least around for four think but here's the thing like i for me at least resident i don't really care about the resident evil stories i know i a story no, i get that i'm just curious story. yeah, yeah. I, but, I think um, they're fantastic games regardless yeah but like i what i was getting at with the trailer is that they did something similar with this trailer where they initially revealed the title of the game is village and then revealed like the eight hidden in the word village i think that sort of stuff is so cool yeah um just a very very cool way to reveal your game and it looked uh, good like you know, it just yeah. didn't look like I. Resident Evil's like canonically kind of grounded in a way that this trailer didn't look super grounded. Like obviously it's fantastical, but like it had rules, and like I, I couldn't really tell if this was adhering to those rules in any capacity because it looked like there was almost like some time jumping stuff going on. Like, yeah, I wasn't really sure what was happening there, but I do. Wanna, I'm into it. <laughs> I do want to point out that I hope this game is also playable in VR because Resident Evil Seven in VR is like. A life-changing experience. That's like, the only that reason I haven't played it. Is pants you, off can't of you. Do, you can't do that on PC. That's the only reason I haven't played it. Yeah, I, I would. I would suggest absolutely waiting for uh, the opportunity to play it in VR. Um, and I hope Eight gets all, a VR implementation as well. So, <sighs> very very I exciting. Wanna... I, at, at the beginning, I thought this was Silent Hill uh, because there were some rumors sw- swirling around that there was going to be like a Silent Hill revival with this thing. But um, can we can we talk VR for a second? Uh, sure. On the PS5, because uh, we saw something that was kind of upsetting to me. It was Astrobot outside of virtual reality. Yeah, so it looks like they're making an Astrobot. So like, he still like know, jumped like, out of the little controller, right? Yeah. So they 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 said like Astrobot's playroom for PlayStation 5, and that gives me a little pause and makes me think maybe this isn't even an actual game because in on on the PlayStation 4 there was a thing called like Playroom VR, and it was essentially just like a VR tech demo with the Astrobot before Astrobot became a thing really, right? So Playroom came out first and then they took the little mascot and turned him into Astrobot and then released Astrobot. So also, maybe yeah, this isn't this might or may or may not be an actual like full game. I'm not too is sure. It, is it just me or does Astrobot fit the aesthetic of the PS5 a lot better than the PS4? That is crazy actually. Yes. <laughs> yes, he does. And like that's got to be intentional, right? Like Yeah, I feel like I mean they 
I mean, it's it's pretty public knowledge that, you know, two to three years into the generation, they're already like seriously planning for the next one. So like, I feel like, yes, I feel like they must have. Uh, but that's that's wild. Like they, they saw Astro Bot as a potential mascot, I guess, you know. And yeah, I like him. Yeah. I would love him to be a mascot. Like I loved I got to play Astro Bot at your place for a bit and it wasn't like. It would have been an instant purchase if I'd gone home yeah, and Astro Bot, had a PSVR. I would have bought it immediately, but I don't have a PSVR. <laughs> Astrobot is the real deal for sure. Like it is a high quality VR platformer, uh, which I feel like it's the only one as of right now. Um, I don't know. I I've heard good things about Moss. I haven't checked it out yet. I don't think it's as good. Something about the fact that like you're holding a traditional controller and you could see that controller in VR, and you're playing a platformer uh, something about the combination of all of those things and the fact that your controller was like a physical thing in the game like the astrobot could jump on it and stuff like all of that put together made astrobot kind of magical for me and it yeah. made me like sad that i didn't have a controller that my windows mixed reality headset could track other than the hand controllers which like just didn't do like i, I would never want to play a platformer with those right yeah so i I don't know. I feel like this is definitely not the last we've seen of Astrobot. I feel like whenever PSVR 2 is revealed or whatever, we're we're certainly going to see Astrobot return there, because um, they, they've got to know they've got something pretty special in their hands with that. Yeah, I'm just surprised. Like they showed a lot of accessories at the end of this. Um, like yeah, they, they, they showed a yeah they showed the control. They showed a headset. They showed a camera, which I don't love. In camera. General. I'm I, I'm I'm guessing it's mainly for the VR. Yeah, but they didn't show the VR, and I don't love. I mean, after the camera. Connect, I mean, obviously, all of these things are optional, right? So, like, yeah, camera. Like, the camera was required for the PS4 either, and just a really weird call. I feel like to show that now. Yeah, like, so the, I, the media remote was weird too. Like, yeah, that 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 seemed very Microsofty to me, to be honest. The media remote that seemed like yeah. something they would do, but um. Let's uh, since we're already talking about it, let's talk about what we saw at the very very end, which was the reveal of the console and the accessories, right? So, I think what we said a few episodes ago was kind of spot on, right? The the design and you know, sort of the language of the DualShock 5, or sorry, DualSense. I hate that it's not the DualShock 5. The the DualSense kind of gave away what the PS5 would look at, like, and that was kind of dead on. And it looks <laughs> we- weird. But yeah, that's it's all- really yeah. weird. I don't hate it. Like, I, I know my I'm first reaction to you guys it. was like, yeah. I don't like it. And I don't. But the reason I don't like it is that it's going to look terrible in my entertainment center if I buy one. Like, it doesn't match anything really I have. It looks like <laughs> Sony consulted, like, aliens from another planet to design this thing. Like, yeah, it it's, does it's not look... look- like, it does not look like future. any console. Yeah. yeah, it's retro future in 2020. Like... It doesn't make any sense to look like it's that. Better than what the leaks look had it looking like. That's I agree with that wholeheartedly. So I hated those leaks. Those those leaks, if you're referring to the V shape thing, that's actually the dev kit. Oh, uh, it's ugly and sin. Yeah. Uh, I mean so, the dev kit doesn't exactly have to look pretty. It's there for the devs to make games for and nothing else. Yeah, Your exactly. dev kit could be a motherboard with some crap stuck to it and it could still be a right, dev kit. Yeah. 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 But yeah, the, yeah, like it's so it's it's got it's got like it it's black look, in the middle with like a white shell around it. And uh, my first thought is like that white angular. Shell, that white yeah. shell looks glossy, kind of. I, I feel well, like it's not gonna look good for very long. <laughs> yeah, I I feel like I won't know for sure until I have my hands on it. Like that's because like I saw some like there was like some blue LED lights on the side, and I thought that looked kind of attractive, but I'm not really sure how it'll all look together until i inspect it you know myself but like I think the killer yeah, thing is that like i, think, yeah, I like to have ahead. all my playstations together and like i've got the gray ps1 the black ps2 the black ps4 the black ps3 and then now we're gonna have this like totally White. different looking ps5 you know yeah, like, I, I'm really interested to see, like, if they do, like, some sort of interview on the design or something, because I want to see how they came to this conclusion. Uh, like, like I, I, the main thing I'm curious about is, like, why the dual color thing? Like, why white and black? You know, like, because the controller's doing that, the console's doing that, like... And is it going to look weird laying just, on its side? You just stick with one color. I feel like it'll look worse laying on its side than it does standing up. Because there's no way I'm standing it up. I don't have room for that anywhere. Yeah, like, I'm not a big fan of standing your consoles up, perfectly honest. Like, I mean, I, I think never... it's good for them, like, from a cooling perspective. But yeah. 
I don't like to. But yeah, let's just mention really quick. They they actually revealed two versions of the console, right? Like so, uh, all digital and like a normal PS5. So the the one without the disc drive actually looks a little sleeker. But like it, it still does. has yeah, it's still uh, yeah, you know, like it's still weird. It's still weird, but it looked a lot nicer to me, and that stings because I don't want the all digital version if I'm gonna buy one. Like yeah, like I, I mean yeah, that might be tough. that might be what does it. That might be what stops me from buying discs. And that's okay. Like, yeah, I you mean, know, like, at some point, it's going to happen. The thing. Yeah, here's the thing. The all-digital future is coming, and it's coming probably faster than it probably would have, uh, you know. Yeah, yeah, the fact they're launching I would argue, especially future. because of, like, maybe things like COVID, right? Like, people were buying all sorts of digital games. Like, like well, Animal Crossing is- sold bonkers digitally compared to physical. But, yeah, and yeah. they <clears> run <throat> the game on the SSD, right? They don't want you reading the game off a of disc at all, so. yeah. I mean, like, the, the disc would presumably install the, the game onto your SSD. Yeah, so, like, I don't know. That I I almost think that because they released this, like, they, they're they not leaving behind people that don't have fast internet by releasing a version of the console that can take a disc, but I bet the slim version will not take discs. I, I'm That's my, that's my um, prediction I'm going to make right now. Yeah, I mean, like... <sighs> I feel like we're going to see the full transition to digital sometime during this upcoming de- generation. Like I feel yeah. like PS6 and Xbox Series I, 2X will not have disk drives, which yeah. kind of sucks. But my estimation is, is that is. No, I'm just going to lay the prediction out right now. You can clip this podcast once we're famous. Um, two to three years from now, uh, there's going to be a PS5 Slim, and it will not have an option to take a disc at all. Yeah, that would not surprise me. I don't like it because I'm an old man yelling at the clouds, but it's it's the way things are. <laughs> yeah, I kind of got, like, I don't know. My PS4, I have three discs now. Like, mm-hmm. first, I think I have three digital games as well. And, like, honestly, I don't get the same satisfaction collecting the PS4 discs and stuff that I do collecting, like, NES cartridges and stuff. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, like, I think it's because, like, the NES cartridges are unique, right? But, like, the P- PS4 discs are the same as, like, Blu-rays and, like, CDs and DVDs that yeah. have been around for a while. I don't like, really like especially like PS1 discs either. I think collecting Switch cases is a lot of fun. I think those, like, yeah. the Switch cartridges are really cool. But, like, I'm yeah, Xbox and PS4 Crossing. discs don't really do it for me. The only thing that does kind of do it for me is, like, when they have, like, unique covers. Like, I got the Uncharted 4, like, limited edition, like, Steelbook. Like, I think that's really cool. That's probably cool, yeah. Uh, But, you know, aside from that, yeah, I, I kind of, I'm kind of with you there. So the collector's editions that don't come with a copy of the game are going to be even weirder next gen? Yeah, it'll just be, like, a cover and some weird accessories, but no game. Maybe I mean, like that's how it already is a lot of the time. Yeah. What a yeah. So strange, but I'm sure we'll all get used to it. But yeah, I think I still haven't touched on. I think my biggest surprise moments of the show. Uh, one, let's let's just get into it. Uh, Demon Souls remake, and this is you know I've been talking about this for weeks, months. Yeah, right? I was like, gonna say is, calling that a surprise moment seems kind of weird to me because I expected I, it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was rumored, it wasn't confirmed, but actually seeing it was, like, something else. You know, like, it just, just, the, Boletaria looks gorgeous, you know, like, I, I, I mean, we didn't see direct gameplay, right, but, like, I, I imagine those were, like, cinematic gameplay snippets or whatever, right, but, like, just seeing that from soft, those from software, like, Souls vibes coming at me again, especially in the form of, like, a next-gen game really got me hyped up. Yeah, I was kind of um, hoping we'd see Elden Ring today. Yeah, Elden Ring, I feel like, who knows when that thing's coming out. Like, I, they revealed it so long ago. Uh, and I think Elden Ring is sort of positioning itself with Microsoft, so I think the next time we see it, it'll be, like, revealed in a Microsoft event. Oh, uh, okay. I wasn't aware of that. Um, yeah, so, yeah. I, I, yeah, I, of course, I was hoping to see Elden Ring, but, like, I think this was the next best thing, especially because I've actually never played Demon Souls. Me neither. I, I'm so, excited too. I uh, this will be my first foray into 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 that, and I am so looking forward to that. Like, uh, so glad the rumors were true, and it wasn't actually like an MGS remake because that was one of the rumors too. Hmm. Um. Yeah, I'm glad that's not true. MGS is a game that doesn't really need remade, in my opinion. Again, it's been remade before. Yeah. The interesting thing to consider here is that, um, just through my readings and whatnot. I, 
I found out that Demon's Souls was actually kind of like an unfinished game. Uh, from software, never completed the fifth Archstone, whatever that means. Uh, I've not played Demon Souls, but everyone who's played Demon Souls will know exactly what that means. So presumably, like maybe Blue Point consulted with them and finished the game for them. That could be really cool. Um, but I don't know. That remains to be seen. I think that's an exciting possibility, though. Yeah. Um, and I think the big showstopper for me. Uh, me in particular, was Horizon 2 Forbidden West. And just someone who's, uh, like, I was totally sold on Horizon as, like, a new franchise after the first game. Like, I, that was my first, like, you know, this is PlayStation 4, this is next-gen moment for me uh, on PlayStation 4. And just experiencing Horizon, the beautiful graphics being one thing, but more so than that, I th- what I think Horizon did really, really, really well was the... The sort of the history it crafted within its world and the lore around the story. I think that was their strongest point. And to see where all of that sort of leads in the next installment has me really, really excited. Uh, especially because it seems like, uh, you know, in the first game, Aloy is mostly you know within her... She starts out in her village area, but then she ventures out. And, like, you see some environments, but for, for the most part, you're, like, in the same sort of area, right? But from what we saw of Horizon 2, like, we saw all sorts of things. We saw jungles, we saw deserts, we saw underwater locations, we saw, like, snowy mountains. I think this this game is going to be a real showstopper um, on PlayStation 5, and I'm so thrilled to finally get that in my hands. I think this more than anything, I think, if if I was if I was on the fence about PlayStation Day 1, uh, this, this pushed me over the edge. If I was. Clearly I wasn't. I'm a big Sony fanboy, but... Yeah, like I, I'm very, very excited to get my hands on Horizon 2. Horizon was a big deal to me uh, when it when it came out on PlayStation 4. Yeah, I, I just uh, I'm weird about open worlds. Ever since I played Breath of the Wild, I haven't returned to a single open world game since then. I yeah, I I totally understand that. To be honest, there's nothing quite like uh, Breath of the Wild. And in terms of open worldness, you know, like Horizon. I don't think is anything special. Like I said, I think the strength of Horizon comes with, you know, it's it's combat coupled with its unique enemy designs, you know, like the robot dinosaurs. Yeah. And and um again the the sort of world building and the lore. Like the lore in Horizon is so so good. Uh like why is the world the way it is? Why are there machines running around? Why are there ruins of like what seems to be you know, our civilization in the game, like all these questions are sort of explored and answered in Horizon 1, but new questions are set up, and I'm looking forward to those being tackled in Horizon 2. Yeah, I thought it was really interesting how quickly, like, you knew it was a Horizon trailer before I did. Because uh, Horizon's got a very signature theme, right? Like, as so, so as soon as you hear, you know, the music or, like, Oh, I, I didn't have the sound on. Even, so. uh, even like, the environment, I don't know. Just by looking at it, I could kind of tell it was Horizon. And then, obviously, once you heard Aloy's voice, that was a dead giveaway. But um, I was kind of scared going into this thing because it came so deep towards the end. Like, I was like, are we really not going to see Horizon 2 at this conference? And I was, I was going to be shocked if that didn't happen. But we ended up getting it. And I think, overall, like, it's so... It's so powerful, uh, this conference... Be, um, in terms of like the first party lineup, right? We've got Spider Man, we've got Ratchet and Clank, we've got Horizon Two, we've got Demon Souls. I think that's an extremely strong uh, lineup. Now the question needs to be asked: Are these launch titles? Because if these are launch titles, this could be potentially one of the best launches of all time. But I don't think. I think one of these maybe will make launch. That's I just my GTA gut, gut feeling. GTA Five makes launch. GTA Five will certainly make launch. GTA Five. I'm one of the few people on the on the planet who doesn't care about GTA 5. <laughs> I like GTA 5. That's the thing. I even like I've GTA actually, Online. Here's the thing. Like, I've tried to play GTA 5 more times than I could count, but I would lose interest like two or three hours into the game. I don't know what it is, but I cannot get into GTA 5. I, I kind of like the story. I liked the set pieces and stuff. Yeah. Honestly, the open world in GTA 5 never really interested me until I went online. I thought it was kind of boring. There's nothing to do. But, yeah. um... Well, the I actual that, like storyline I thought was interesting, even though it's not like it's not a masterpiece of writing or anything. It just so has good set you, pieces. Do you have to pay for GTA Five online? No. Okay, so I wonder why like they put a message at the beginning like all 
people who have PlayStation uh, GTA 5 on PlayStation 4 will go get GTA Online for free on PS5. Probably I because wonder the, what that that's was about. to ensure that they don't have to buy a GTA 5 again. Well, actually, you bring up a really good point, Mike. Where was Sony's uh, take on smart delivery? I, I thought maybe we would get that, uh, but perhaps that's being saved for a future event. I do believe they have to have something. There's no way they don't have like an implementation of like... I don't know. Sony's we're... been very cocky ever since the PS4 dominated. I... That being that being the case, I still highly doubt it. There's there's that would instantly put them that would be like a reverse of what happened with the PS4 or Xbox One generation. I think they're intelligent enough no, to know not to ask people to pay for PS5 versions of PS4 games they have, but we shall see. Um, and yeah, those are kind of the big hits from the conference, and obviously we saw a lot more stuff. We saw a lot more. Uh, unique uh, indie titles with with really cool aesthetics and uh, a few more AAA uh, third party games, but I think I've talked about all the big highlights for me personally. Are there any specific games you guys want to highlight? I'm gonna need you to help me find the title. Uh, oh wait, no, I put it in the chat because uh, I knew I was gonna forget it because I'm yeah. like that. Um. It was like the one, it had a guy with a gun, it had a guy fighting monsters with a sword, and it had what looked like just a uh, little devil. Little, uh, yes, yeah, okay. I thought that looked, little devil inside trailer. me was what it was called, I think, and I was super into every part of that trailer. Yeah, I, I, I thought more than anything, I thought the trailer itself was very, very well put together, like with the, the music and how the, what we were seeing on screen ebbed and flowed with the music, I thought it was just very well constructed. See, I didn't even get to hear the music and the art style. Oh, I was just so okay. taken with the art style immediately. Yeah. And, like, the yeah, name definitely. Little Devil Inside Me is something to me, you know? Yeah, definitely watch that trailer with the music. I thought the music made that trailer. It was very good. So that okay. that has me excited despite knowing literally nothing about it. Yeah. Yeah, like, I think the main thing, like, we, we see lots of potential here. Like, all all these different flavors of games could be... Could be great, you know. Like we, I'm excited to dive into them and find out. Another big one that we just totally glossed over was Hitman Three. <laughs> oh yeah, and yeah. the reason I glossed over it, even though that's probably the one I'm most excited for, yeah, is that I don't want anything other than more levels for Hitman Two. That game is already a masterpiece, and like, just give me more of it, and I will give you your sixty dollars. Those those games are just so fun. I will say though I'm not gonna lie, like the set piece they sort of set up for us uh, when they were talking about him in three, like with uh, the agent like on top of the Burj Khalifa carrying out an assassination in Dubai. I thought that was so cool. Like I feel like that'd be so cool to play out. See, I didn't even see it. I saw I saw you say Hitman and I saw the logo and I was uh, like, oh, okay. I'll be buying that. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, that's like, that's certainly like that level of game. Like you don't really even need to see it, you know, like. Yeah, I mean, I love new Hitman. I love old Hitman probably even more. Mm -hmm. So, like, if they could... I don't know. There's a couple of things, like, new Hitman holds your hand a little bit more than I would like. Although, I think that's my fault. I think I can turn that off and stuff. Yeah, but you definitely can. It's it's so, so good. And I, I just recently... I didn't even know this was there. I started playing old Hitman levels again because I had just been progressing through the story. And, like, they have stuff like community made hits essentially which like they impose restrictions on you and you're not even like they just pick any npc for you to go after and some of them get so big that like who who makes it io is that who makes yes, it? yes io interactive io actually has added some of them and made them official like they'll you know take a different npc and you know it's a different contract using the same levels and it makes you completely rethink everything yeah, it, it, almost to the extent it might as well be a new level, except it's cooler because, like, I, I feel like part of Hitman is, like, being prepared, already knowing the environment and everything. And so you get to go into this mission knowing all those things, but also not knowing exactly what's going to happen. Yeah, and I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Hitman 3 is like, yeah, that's that's a 
that's probably like a day one buy for me. It, they said January 2021, right? So that's not launch, but that's close enough, I think. Okay, so I, I said Hitman would get my $60, but I'm actually really bad. IO puts their games on sale so fast. <laughs> like, I, I have that, like, Hitman IO, 1 and 2, like, I feel like one year IO, late. IO needs the support, though. I feel like I've heard stories of them, like, being so close to running out of money. Oh, um, really? Uh, so I, I will buy it day one. Yeah. Because uh, I do not want those games to go away. But they, they put, like, I bought Hitman 2 for, like, $20. Yeah. Like, a year after release. Like That's crazy. Yeah. Like, they're on a Square Enix level of putting their games on sale. Like, <clears throat> Yeah, so, obviously, this event just happened, and all sorts of news is still coming in after the fact. Apparently, that Astrobot game will be pro- preloaded on every PS5. Uh, wow! So, so he is a mascot. Okay. Yeah, they got so, me. <laughs> so, that's, that's a thing. It's called Astro's Play World. Comes preloaded on PS5, so that's the thing. Another thing I'm seeing, uh, insiders are saying Final Fantasy 16 was supposed to be at this event. So I don't know what happened uh, there or if that's true. Uh, that's but weird. Considering that is true, I, I imagine we'll see that very soon, uh, which is pretty cool. But yeah, wow, uh, so much to talk about. Like uh, we went through. So many games. Uh, are there any? Is there anything else? I, of course, there's stuff we didn't mention, but is there anything else that immediately captures your attention that you want to bring up? Uh, I didn't feel blown away by any of the visuals, and like I didn't see anything that was like, oh, you could not do that without ray tracing. Like, I mean, Horizon Two made me kind of drop my jaw, and I know it wasn't gameplay, but I would, I would be willing to bet you money that was like in engine like that's how the game's going to look <laughs> they would have had an in engine label on it like they, I, they said at the beginning of this thing that everything was running on ps5 in real time oh okay i didn't see that so yeah okay so i, I, I still mean, a cinematic means nothing to me uh, i've said it before and i'll say it again no, like, I, you can, you totally can frame a cinematic but like that's the only bad thing i could say about any of this other than the fact that gta 5 was there like uh, other than that this was an amazing presentation it wasn't boring like a lot of these have been recently yes i I agree with that and i do encourage you to look up the ratchet and clank trailer when they upload that uh on youtube so it's not you know horribly stream call quality type visuals right because i think the ratchet and clank trailer really is the strongest demonstrator of what uh you know what is possible now that would not have been possible before yes but that's ssd right like right yeah yeah and, and that's and, but, cool but the visuals and, are nothing to sniff at either like the visuals look gorgeous in that game was everything oh, i guess you wouldn't be able to tell it was a stream i was i was gonna ask if stuff looked like it was 60 fps but oh there's no way to tell yeah yeah that because was a dumb question the, yeah. the presentation itself was uh 1080p 30 fps so yeah we, 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 we what are they know. hiding and yeah <laughs> <laughs> everything uh nothing runs well on ps5 that's the secret um but no like i yeah like everyone knows where i stand with sony i'm a big fan of sony first party games and i think this event delivered in that aspect we never even talked about housemark uh and they're making a game exclusive to ps5 um it, i i can't recall the title right now but it Is was that, the that strawberry thing no, no 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 it was it was the woman like who who was in space and she like crash landed on the planet it was kind of like alien right like it was like in like an alien infection and it seemed kind of like horror tinged but they also had some of that arcadey like gameplay that house mark is known for in there when they sh- were showing off the game so i think that's really good i think house mark needs to do what they do best which is like making the best like arcadey twin stick shooters like ever like house mark is so good at that I saw so, like small elements of that in this game, even though this game seems to be well outside the, their wheelhouse. Like there's a story going on, and you're controlling a character in third person. That's like they've never done anything like that before. So it's pretty unique as well. But yeah, overall from the first party perspective, I'm very very pleased. And you know, first parties are why I love Sony so much. Um, and uh, I can't wait to get my hands on a PS5 and play these games. I mean, I guess that's all I have to say on it. Um, uh, any, any final thoughts from you, Mike? Not really. I, again, I didn't catch a lot of it, but I'm excited tentatively. Yeah, but. I think, I think th- I, I, looking at it from a slightly more objective perspective, I think the best thing about this presentation is that it had literally something for any kind of gamer. I think 
like they even have like an, a trailer for NBA 2K, right? Like if you're if you're into sports games, which you know of course a lot of people are. Those games sell like crazy, you know. Like they had platformers, they had racers, they had. I think the only thing absent really was like a fighting game, but they had you know, you know obviously third person action adventure games. They had immersive sims, like all sorts of these different genres getting representation here, which I think is really cool. But yeah, I think that'll do it for me on the PlayStation 5. You guys want to uh, go into what you've been playing? Uh, I haven't gotten to play any games this week, if I'm being honest. Nothing new, just Rocket League. Rocket League? Okay, that's fair. Mike, how about you? Uh, same as Connor, but I've been playing a little bit more Elite Dangerous than I did last week. Okay. Speaking of Rocket League, there was one game uh, on the showcase that looked kind of like Rocket League. You know, you guys know what I'm talking about? No, I must have missed it. Did you catch it? Okay, yeah. So it was, it was like a, it was like a, I don't really know what it was. It was like a car battling kind of game. Like you rammed cars into each other, but like just the aesthetic reminded me a lot of Rocket League. And I was wondering if maybe you saw it, Connor. Maybe uh, you could give your impressions after you see the trailer for that. But. Uh, uh. Maybe, maybe next week. Maybe, yeah. But, um, so I guess I'll talk about what I've been playing. So in anticipation for The Last of Us Part 2, I replayed all of The Last of Us Remastered uh, on PlayStation 4 uh, this past week. Took me roughly 15 hours to do. And uh, this was actually my first time replaying the entire game uh, since it launched in 2013. And, um... It, it was really nice sort of revisiting the this world and the story and those characters. And I think playing through it again, especially, you know, in 2020, when I'm 26 years old, I have uh, a much more developed opinion of it than I did back then, where I was just like, oh, my God, this story is really good. Uh, I still hold the fact that this is this is a very good story, and I think these are some of the best developed characters ever in a video game. I do think... Uh, a little bit where it might fall a little short is in the gameplay slash AI department. I I was kind of shocked when I played through this game um, again. Uh, I remember the first time I played it, it was reasonably difficult. I breezed through the game this time. Uh, it was not even remotely challenging, and I was kind of shocked by that. Granted, I did play on normal, but I seem to ha- remember having a much b- bigger challenge with that. But this time around, um, I found that just by simply crafting like Molotovs, I could basically take care of any situation um so i'm excited to see if that's been addressed in the last of us part two and from the early spoiler free impressions i've gotten i i've seen that they've made lots of improvements in gameplay and enemy ai so i'm ex- excited to experience those uh but um i think overall the the mechanics of the game were solid i think the the highlight uh gameplay wise has to be the encounters with the infected um you know, minus the whole Molotov cocktail thing, like that kind of breaks the game. But like, um, especially if you turn listen mode off, like those encounters can be very, very intense and pulse pounding. And um, I think that's definitely a highlight of the game, uh, the the intensity of it. And I think another aspect that I didn't really appreciate the first time I played through the game, which really stood out to me now, uh, was the environmental storytelling in this game. So there's all sorts of like. Um, things that you can miss entirely if you do not have a keen eye right so like all of the environments in this game tell a story from whether it's like an abandoned house or like you know like a camp in the middle of the forest there are like areas to look around and documents to find and clues to uncover that really sort of tell the stories like little micro narratives within this bigger story of you know people dealing with this outbreak dealing with essentially what is the apocalypse in different ways and um the majority of these stories are of course very heartbreaking and some are actually quite horrific so uh maybe it's for the best if you don't have a stomach for those sort of things to miss these uh and not go digging too far but like i was very surprised by the amount of environmental storytelling there actually was like in every sort of level in every sort of area there were multiple little snippets of lore i could ingest and little stories that um i could uncover like little notes that people would write to each other and in in their attempts to survive this situation 
And I think one of the most interesting ones, I guess, light spoilers for optional stuff in The Last of Us Part Two, is when you uh, when you go into the sort of sewer area, and you find out that like this the, the this entire sewer system, uh, people after the outbreak uh, tried to move in there and sort of set up a little society in there, and obviously it failed. You saw the ruins of that society, but as you progress through the sewers, you can like pick up and read these notes. And like you could see all sorts of things from like little little things to see how these people live, like how they collected water, what their rules were for the water, like how much water you were allowed to use to shower and like how they educated their young and how they like uh, caught their food. All sorts of these little details that really fleshed out this uh, this society that wasn't there anymore. And um, and obviously, like if you if you dig a little deeper to see like what went wrong, like. You end up discovering some horrible, horrible things, and long story short, you know, everyone seems to be dead, but when you leave the sewer and you search the first house outside of the sewer, and it ob- again, this is completely missable. If you don't search this house, you won't find it, but you can find a note by Ish, whose notes you've been reading essentially all throughout the sewer, and it seems like Ish actually got out and escaped the situation uh, with some – with, with some like young kids right and like most of the people he was with died in the sewer from what you could read uh from from the clues you read but it seems like it sur- survived so it'd be interesting to see if he makes an appearance in the last of us part two um as just a sort of like throwback to to people who play the first game and uncovered all these little side stories so that's just one example of of many of of really cool little side stories that i honestly i think i completely missed the first time i played the game so, yeah, so I think, yes, overall, obviously, I still think The Last of Us uh, is an incredible, incredible game. Uh, one of the best games ever made, but um, I, there are some small problems with it I would like to see uh, improved in The Last of Us Part Two. And last but not least, I think story-wise, of course, I'm so excited and terrified to see what will happen to Joel and Ellie in the next installment, because... Just judging by what the director has said, uh, the themes of this next game are being like hatred and revenge. I do not see really a happy ending for anyone in this next game, but regardless, I'm still very excited to play it. Okay, so that's my spiel. Rocket League was fun this week, too. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sure it was. It always is. (laughs) I'm going to spoil it. I haven't been playing Warframe this entire time. I actually was patching most of this. Mm. Ah. No, nah, I paid attention to most of this. I was just browsing Resident Evil lore. Yeah, exciting stuff. I, I, I'm looking forward to the, the months to come. All right, guys, I think that's going to do it for us this week. Uh, you can follow us at Ad Podcast Game Talk on Twitter. Please click the link in the description of this podcast to follow our Discord and chat with us there. Uh, please like, rate, and review us on any podcast service you may use. And finally, thank you, uh, Connor and Mike, for joining me. Yep, guys. See you next week. Oh, All right. thank you. Oh, well, you're welcome. And we'll see you next week. Bye.